Hi there, my name is Tony and in this video I will open a package, take my dog out for a walk and uh, show you how to make a beautiful and practical harness for your dog just like this one. Before we start making this, let's go through all the materials we need. You will obviously need some leather and uh, I recommend six ounces of the strongest leather you can find. In my case, a beautiful uh, brown latigo, uh, which is a mix of vegetable and chrome tan leather. You are also gonna need a few rivets um, a couple of uh, sun brown buttons and either 20 or 25 millimeter buckles depending on the size that you choose to make because yes this harness will come in three different sizes to fit most dogs. Now cats or cat like creatures but dogs just like this one. If you are like me and you don't like looking all over the place for the right hardware, you can get all the metal parts from our own hardware shop, the Leather Republic, where we sell exactly the same hardware we use when we build any of our items, this one included. And there is one more thing you need before you start. Yes, you guessed it, the pattern. So, you know, go follow the link down in the video description, get your pattern and uh, download it to your computer so we can start already. Once you have the pattern, print it at actual size and uh, maybe use the first page to make sure it all came out at the correct size. Now this pattern is uh, made to be used with most home printers and um, there will be a few pieces larger than a regular size page so go ahead and cut the pattern along the dotted lines and I have the scissors on them and uh, paste them together. Mind you, the larger pieces spread over more than two pages, but I assure you, it is very easy to figure out which goes where. Now, after you assembled the paper patterns, cut all the shapes out so uh, we can use them on leather. Now use some masking tape to firmly hold the paper patterns on to the leather. Next, we punch the stitching holes. Now it's important 
to use a high density plastic punching board underneath, okay? Um, avoid using wood as it will damage your whole punch. Rubbing some wax along the stitching line before you start making those holes, it's always a good idea and uh, it will make your life easier in more than one way. As a matter of fact, I recommend watching my leather tips and tricks video I made a while back uh, for more details and uh, especially if you are a beginner, all right? I use 1.5 millimeter hole puncher for the stitching holes and uh, three millimeter hole puncher for the rivet hole. If this is more than just a hobby for you, you might wanna invest into a multi-prong tool just like this one. Not sure if this $140 puncher is right for you? Well, I made a full review of this very tool, so go ahead and watch that if you consider buying one, okay? Regardless, always have a single puncher handy because the stitching lines aren't always in a straight line or spaced uh, equally at six millimeters, all right? After you punched every single hole and uh, made friends with all your neighbors, it's time to cut the leather pieces out. Use a sharp cutter or a knife because um, you want to cut the leather in a single pass, if at all possible. Also, the many scars on my fingers should be enough to convince you to keep your other hand away from the blade. I will now add a little patina to the leather and uh, make this a little bit more interesting and exciting to look at. All you need is some wax, a felt polishing pad and a lot of elbow grease, all right? Mind you, this method will yield various results depending on the type of leather you use. It will work on vegetable tan leather or latigo. It will not work on chrome tan leather, just before you, you know, try. Anyway, once you got every single piece ready and cut for assembly, let's continue by attaching these two large pieces together. The back and the front. I will use one millimeter wax thread, a red in my case, and um, for my first stitch I will start here and uh, go all the way over here and uh, stop on the other side. I've been using these tiny little things for a couple of months now, absolute game changer. Now, there is an affiliated Amazon link in the video description in case you want to purchase one and uh, support me as well.
This is called saddle stitching. And uh, if you want to get great results, go ahead and watch my tutorial on how to saddle stitch better because the look of the stitching will make or break your leather working street cred. If you know what I mean, gotta look good. There's no way around it. This is the first teaching done. Next, do this line here, just the same. I'll go grab a coffee and see you when you're done. What? You want one of these? Don't worry about it. these for real fans. Next, we need to fold this over to form a pocket. Uh, but once we do, attaching this button and these two rivets may prove somewhat difficult, so better to do it now. Now, this tiny strip here will hold this strap closed, okay, at all times with the tip attached to this button here. Next, we can do these two stitching lines right here and here. Quick note, this time your needle will pass through three layers of leather, so please pay extra attention um, that it does, okay? Especially at the start right here. Also, keep all the edges aligned the best you can, uh, which should be easy if the holes are punched at a constant distance from the edge.
Once uh, this is done, do the other side, okay? Both sides here. Great work. The stitching looks good all around, but those edges need a little bit of work. As a matter of fact, for this particular build, I strongly recommend you either paint them with edge paint or burnish them, like I'll do next, to prevent uh, moisture from getting inside the leather, since, you know, rain puddles with grass, all that stuff dogs love. First, let's sand them edges with a Dremel or by hand with a piece of sandpaper. Next, we can bevel the edges and uh, add some leather sealant. After that, let the burnishing begin. And uh, let me tell you a secret. No matter how fast and convenient a burnishing machine like this one is, Nothing beats a hand burnisher like this one. Yes, it will take longer, but uh, then this. Once you're happy with your edges, Go ahead and attach the small pocket flap right here. Perfect. You now have a place for your poop bags. The dog's poop. Now yours, I hope. Moving on. We need to attach this D-ring here. So, uh, you know, we can later attach a leash to it. Before you move any further, make sure you use strong hardware for this build for obvious reasons. This design works and I'm perfectly comfortable walking my very strong Akita Inu in this harness. Having said that, your harness will be as strong as you make it. So inspect all the hardware very closely before you use it. Make sure the leather is strong enough and uh, your stitching is done properly. Even more, inspect your harness every single time before using it for wear and tear, no matter if you made it or if you bought it from somewhere else. And uh, if you plan to sell these, 
advise your clients to do it as well before taking their dog out for a walk. Now, talking about safety, this strap has a double layer and it will be attached with a double stitching line on each side uh, in this round shape, not accidentally, because it will dissipate the pulling force on a large area. In other words, there is no way this steering will come off. And as a fail safe, you could use two copper rivets right here, but I'll admit, this is more of a design choice as uh, the stitching and the double layered strap are more than enough to hold the deering attached to this harness. Next, let's attach a handle in case you have a tall dog and you have long hands. While optional, it's good to have it in case for whatever reason a second person needs to grab onto your dog and help you restrain it. So please watch closely how to combine these two pieces and attach it to the harness correctly.
you might have noticed a couple of extra holes in my video. Well, they were not supposed to be there. My bad. But uh, don't worry, they will not be in the pattern, so you don't need to worry about them, okay? It's my error. Okay, so you have a safety handle as well now. Great work. Let's move on to these four buckles here and here. Also, you will be using rivets here that will have to go through all the three layers of leather you chose. So make sure they are long enough. If they aren't, maybe consider using uh, the optional stitching only tabs instead of the regular ones I use, all right? Because these buckles cannot come off, okay? So consider the safer option and go with that. After you attach this tab firmly to the main piece, flip the other side and again, use the saddle stitching technique like I'm doing here. At this stage, you should be looking at the same thing I am, unless, you know, you're watching this for entertainment, in which case, I thank you. Next, the straps. I strongly recommend you cut these a bit longer and then trim them to your dog's exact size. The straps also come with uh, these uh, pads for added comfort especially if your dog has shorter hair. They are exactly like any shoulder strap pad you might do for a bag. So yeah, have at it and um, I'll talk to you after you're done, all right?
Next, attach the longer one here under the dog's belly and the shorter one around the chest, like so. The harness has a wee pocket here for your GPS tracker or maybe a name tag with a phone number just in case you ever need to find your dog. Hopefully not, but having this option is uh, definitely a comforting thought in my case. Oh, and one more thing, on your next walk, be ready for a few compliments and uh, be prepared to answer questions like, where'd you get this? And uh, can you make me one? I'm not even kidding, I got offered $200 for this. Thank you so much for watching and um, if you like dogs, then you gotta like this video and uh, you know click that subscribe button as well if you like puppies it's free who cares and who doesn't like dogs and puppies everybody does peace